When you are asleep, do you breathe through your mouth or your nose? A lot of people use the mouth taping method. So they find out once you tape your mouth and then you start breathing through your nose and they experience a lot of benefits. For example, some people told me they sleep better, they have less headache, and even their sleep apnea gets better. You have to be careful. Some people may really can benefit from mouth taping, some people cannot. So I had a conversation with the malfunctional therapist, Renata. So she has used mouth taping for over six months herself in combination with many other type of intervention to really help her sleep better. So she wants to share with us from both her personal experience and her professional knowledge that how mouth taping can really help us or harm us and what are the pros and cons you should pay attention to if you want to try the mouth taping method. So it's not the mouth taping is great, it's the nose breathing is great. Well, like you said, it's very important for us to find out first why not everybody should be taping their mouth to go to sleep. It is not safe for everybody to tape their mouth to go to sleep. I don't ever like to close the lips. So whenever I'm ready to recommend or to try mouth taping with my patients, I always use kinesiology tape, which is a little stretchy. And I'm working on the muscle. I'm looking for muscle function. You know, so if the lips are not working properly, we're going to work on toning up those muscles around the lips, the orbicularis oris. And then uh, I can use the kinesiology tape to try to help engage those muscles a little bit more. It's a sensory approach to get those muscles to work. Now, I'm sorry to say, but every other tape out there, it's not working this way. It's a mechanical uh, approach where let's just close them. So you're forced to breathe through your nose. And that is not how it should be done. There are several people that do it and they notice a great improvement and they swear by it, but they're not doing anything else that you're supposed to be doing around um, trying to get to the root cause of your mouth breathing. Because if all, if all you're doing is something mechanic, right? Mechanical and just pushing, and grabbing those lips, you know, making those lips shut. You're not addressing nasal hygiene. Are you cleaning your nose every night? Are you trying to eliminate allergies? Um, you know, what else are you doing to promote that this thing is going to last forever? I taped for about six months while doing my functional therapy, while working on my allergies before I could stop taping and no longer need it. That's the goal. The tape is there to help you until you don't need it anymore but now if you have to use it every night for the rest of your life then you're not addressing the 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 issue yeah i do receive some comments from audience they say oh i like i'm not taping my whole mouth i'm ta just mm -hmm. taping this middle part or i'm punching holes <laughs> and so yeah. i can still breathe but my lips cannot really open easily it's still it's still mechanical you're mm. still not addressing the issue. Now, if you're doing that only, you're not going to get very far. But if you're working with a myofunctional therapist and she chooses to, to get the patient to tape that way, great. That is just not how I work. Uh, like I said, I like to address muscle function and I need to get the muscle to contract a certain way. And having a piece of tape that goes vertically on your lips doesn't address that. Having a tape that goes over the whole lips and you poke holes in it, it's not going to address that. I need to think about how does that muscle contract? And I'm going to go towards that contraction. So for people who really are into this mouth taping method and they, or actually they're really into nose breathing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, where should they get started with this journey of uh, figure out what's exactly going on with them? I always recommend seeing a myofunctional therapy first. Why? Because we are the middle puzzle piece of the multidisciplinary team. A myofunctional therapist is connected to an ENT. They are connected to an ENT or sleep physician. They are connected to an orthodontist, to a dentist, to a speech pathologist, to a chiropractor, to a physical therapist, um, to an occupational therapist. 
So we have all of these other professionals that we work with and we know who to refer you to next. Uh, now, if you go to an ENT first, they don't necessarily recommend a malfunctional therapist after. They're just going to look at what they know and what they see. They're going to address that and then the patient is done. But we are, uh, like my friend Nicole likes to say, we are like the quarterback of the team. We are guiding the patient step by step. Okay, now, you know, we address your core strength with a the physical therapist. Now we need to address sensory issues with an occupational therapist, for example. Now we need to go get a tongue tie release by this dentist or by this ENT. Or now it's time for us to get expansion. So we kind of guide the patient. It's not, whenever you go see a myofunctional therapist, it doesn't mean that you're going to need myofunctional therapy every time, but we're going to be able to tell you, give you the steps. Okay, step one, we need to have an assessment. And then step two, you need to go see this other professional. Like that, it's, it's a whole body approach. You cannot just focus on what you know. So after today's conversation, what do you think about mouse taping? Welcome to leave me a message down below. Let me know. If you like my channel, please consider like, subscribe, and share. Remember, sleep is an individualized thing. So hopefully you find the best way that works for you to optimize your own sleep. I'm Dr. Yishan. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.